Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 1, Lesson 6, Practice Problems Review is on Area of Parallelograms. Let's practice finding the area of parallelograms. In Problem 1, which three of these parallelograms have the same area as each other? Now, first off, these are all parallelograms, which is good to know on this. And so, what I would do is find the area of all. So here's my base. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We need to count straight up because the base and the height meet at a right angle. And the height is 3. Area for all parallelograms is base times height. So 5 times 3 is going to get us 15 square units. Now, here's my base. On B, it's 3. And if I extend this out and extend straight up, my height here is 5. So again, I have a base of 3 and a height of 5, and this time, area being base times height is 3 times 5, which is still 15 square units. So there's our 15s. Now this is a parallelogram, even though it's a square, and our base and our height here are 4 each. Well, 4 times 4 this time is equal to 16, so it seems to be the right answer for the one that's not the same. But let's just make sure, all right? Here, we have a base of 3. If I come up at the right angle for a height of 5, area will be base times height again to be 3 times 5, which is 15. So our solution here, which three of these parallelograms have the same area of each other? A, B, and D. As we continue on now, oh, well, here, A, B, D. Which pair in problem two of base and height produces the greatest area? All measurements are in centimeters. Well, remember, area for parallelograms are base times height. When we multiply 4 times 3 and a half together, we end up with 14 square centimeters. When we multiply 8 tenths times 20 together, we end up with 16 square centimeters. When we multiply 6 by 2 and 25 hundredths together, we get 13 and a half square centimeters. And when we take 10 times 1 and 4 tenths, we get 14 square centimeters. So which of these solutions has the greatest area? B. Next, here are the areas of three parallelograms. Use them to find the missing length labeled with a question mark on each parallelogram. Let's zoom in on A. Our area is 10 square units. And so remember, area of a parallelogram is equal to the base times the height. So we're told the area is 10, the base is 5, and we do not know the height. Well, let me ask you, 5 times what is 10? 5 times 2 is 10. So that missing is 2 units. Let's move on to the B. 21 square units. Well, we're told that this distance is 7. And we're looking for that distance. The fact that we have the 1 down there doesn't really affect the question. Area is still going to equal base times height. We're told the area is 21 square units. We could say our base this time is our question mark. And our height is that 7. Well, what times 7 is 21? 3 times 7 is 21. So 3 units is my solution. Looking at C now, I would call this 5 
the height, and this question mark, the base. And so if area is equal to base times the height, and I just noticed I cut off the 25 there, 25 is going to equal my, once again, I don't know, my base, times my height of 5. Well, what times 5 is 25? How about 5? So 5 units is my solution to C. And that's question 3. Question 4. The Dockland building in Hamburg, Germany is shaped like a parallelogram. If the length of the building is 86 meters and its height is 55 meters, what is the area of the face of the building? I'm going to sketch over this here. The length was 86 meters. And the height, which meets at that right angle, is 55 meters. Well, area of parallelograms, whether they're the face of a building or uh, on a grid in a book, is base times height. So 86 will multiply by 55. And we will get 4,730 square meters. Question 5. Select all segments that could represent the corresponding height if side M is the base. All right, let's highlight M here. And actually, I'm going to kind of do a dash line coming all the way out from it. And here's why. Any line that meets at a right angle with base M and goes up to the other one, the other base that is, can be a corresponding height. And so I'm going to lock in on these right angles here. And that will guide me towards the solution. Well, which lines connect those two bases, with this being the other base, at that right angle? I see an E, an F, be careful here, a J and a K. And so my solution here will be, it's a lot of little letters there, A because of E, B because of F, E because of J, and F because of K. A, B, E, and F. And once again, you're looking for that right angle connecting the two bases. The height and the base of parallelograms always meet perpendicularly at the right angle. Find the area of the shaded region. All measurements are in centimeters and show your reasoning. Well, I see two rectangles here. The shaded region is what we're looking for. Let's find the area of the first one, the big one first, that big white space. This distance here is going to match this distance here, which is 2 and 12. So this will be 14. Then our up and down is 4 and 6, so 10. So this area will be 14 times 10, which is 140 square centimeters. Now, this rectangle on the inside is at this angle stuff. And we just can't apply numbers here. We don't have those numbers right now. We do have our, a bunch of these little triangles. Let's see if we can connect some of these triangles together. All right. I have this triangle here. And I have this triangle here that appear to be the same size. That's what I'm looking for. Those two appear, and they are the same size. And so if I join those two together, I have this side that's 2 and this side that's 6. If I come out two more and straight up, I form a nice rectangle there. That's 2 by 6. So this area is going to be 2 times 6, which is 12 square centimeters, and that's one of the pieces I'm going to need to eventually remove. Now what about the other two? 
I have this triangle that appears to be 4 by 12. And I have this triangle that appears to be 4 by 12 as well, with a height of 4 and a base of 12. Well, what if I joined those two together? I'm coming 12 out and 4 down. And that looks like that top corner there. And what if I go then 4 down and 12 out? And now I have a 12 by 4 rectangle where I'll take 12 times 4 and get 48 square centimeters. So if I combine those two, I would take 12 and 48 to get 60 square centimeters. And to get what that orange area is there, how about we take 140 minus 60, which produces a result of 80 square centimeters. So we found the entire area, and then used combining triangles to get rectangles to subtract those. And that is it for this grade six, unit one, lesson six, practice problems review. Good luck.